Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Bogan. Let's talk about obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is cessation or stopping breathing during sleep. Why does this happen and why is it important? Well, during sleep, the human brain is shutting down motor activity. So when you look at someone when they're asleep, they're flaccid, their, their muscles are relaxed. The problem with this is, is that the throat muscles, the muscles we use for phonation and swallowing, those muscles also relax. So in all of us, when we go to sleep, because these muscles are flexible, they collapse to some extent. Most people, on average, the airway closes down to about 40% of the normal airway. But there are some people in whom these muscles relax so much that they completely close. And when they completely close and you suck in air, then they vibrate, you snore. So snoring is effectively sleep-induced excessive relaxation of the throat muscles. It also runs in families, so it does have a, this familial aspect to it. The problem with this is, is now you're breathing through a little small hole that's vibrating. It's hard to breathe. And in some individuals, it gets so hard to breathe, the muscles relax so much that they obstruct the airway. Now the individual's asleep, they don't know that they're holding their breath. Or sometimes they'll shallow breathe, we call those half breathing or hypopneas. But these events can cause a drop in oxygen level. And then after the oxygen level drops to a certain point, then the brain wakes up with an effort to breathe. Now these awakenings can be really short. So again, most people don't know that they're having these little awakenings. When the oxygen drops, there's a release of adrenaline, and when you release this adrenaline, your heart rate can go up, your blood pressure can go up, you can have sweats, night sweats, you may have headaches, but it disrupts the sleep. And therefore, the individual, when they awaken the next day, oftentimes has non-restorative sleep. They're tired, or they're sleepy, or they may have executive function abnormality. They can't think, they can't focus, they can't concentrate. As a clinician, I'm concerned because, one, people shouldn't have to work that hard to breathe when they're asleep. The drops in oxygen levels stress the heart and the brain and certainly can cause high blood pressure or even heart disease or affect cognition and brain function over time. When we do a study, we're measuring the severity of the abnormality and qualifying. Uh, it, do, does one have abnormal breathing? How severe is it and does it need to be treated?